Hey everyone, Guru Hamid here, and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with Opeth's Michael Ackerfeld. Thank you so much for coming. You've said that you don't really look at your Wikipedia page. No, not, not often. I have, I have checked it out, but uh, I haven't read, I have not read through everything. Right. This always makes for the best segment, so let's get started. Uh, first of all, I'll read something that I read on your Wikipedia page various Wikipedia pages today. Okay. Uh, you can give me a fact or a fiction and elaborate if you'd like. All right. Uh, according to Wikipedia, your birth name is Lars Michael Ackerfeld. Yeah, that's true. True. Fact. Okay, good. In that order, too. So a lot of people think I'm Lars. Like, that's Lars. my name. But that's the name of my dad, too. Oh, okay. are you? Yeah, my dad's name is Lars. So, so there's no junior? Is there junior? No, no junior. Okay. Actually, I've never asked if I got that name because of that was his name. Oh. That's a good question. I'm going to next time I talk to him. <laughs> next time, yeah. Uh, at Just to assume, yeah. At 16 years old, you were invited to join what would later become Opeth by David Isberg, uh, and you were originally going to be the band's bassist. Mm -hmm. That's true, too. Fact. Okay, doing well so far. But I did find a contradiction on, uh, on Wikipedia. Um, when you actually went to that practice, you showed up to practice the next day, uh, but David didn't tell the other members that you were coming, including the band's bassist. That's true. Too. <laughs> and uh, then it says, it kind of hits a fork in the road here, when it led to an argument, uh, which, depending who you believe, either caused you and David to leave or caused the rest of the band to quit. Yeah, it's uh, it's a long time ago, but I was asked to wait outside. <laughs> uh, they, they told me like the other guys, like uh, they were not happy that I was there, um, and like the bass player showed up. Yeah. I only joined. I, I only wanted to try play. I didn't want to play bass, but I wanted to join ba the band because we had a nice logo at the time. Really, with an inverted cross. Perfect. And uh, David knew uh, some of the guys in Nihilist, which en ended up being entombed, which were like idols of mine. So wow. I figured maybe we can, you know, play a show with them or something. But they asked me to wait outside. And when David came out, he said he fired them all. And wow. That we, <laughs> you know, we, you and me should, uh, re like, we're open now, kind of. All right. So I could play guitar. Oh, per yeah. and perfect. Uh, the band's name is derived from Opet, which is the name of a fictional city in the Wilbur Smith novel, The Sunbird. Yep, that's true too. Wow, They're doing way better than normal, yeah, yeah. I have to say. This is surprising. But it's, a, it's not a good book. <laughs> it's not a good no, book. I read it. It's like you, one of those books you buy in a novelty shop in uh, like a holiday destinations. You know, you, you get your... Uh, like candy and uh, balloons or whatever you're gonna get, and you get really? that book, yeah. And why the why take the name from? The well, book? he David came up with the name. Ah, okay. Yeah. So he liked it, even though the book is. Yeah, shit. he he. I can't remember if I asked if he liked the book, but he, you know, had some like uh, death references. You know, like it was a bit of a occult thing going on. You have referred to Opeth's first performance as probably the worst appearance one could have witnessed. Yeah, I might have said that, yeah. <laughs> because it was pretty bad, yeah. And uh, it also says that after that first performance, uh, the bassist and guitarist immediately left the band. Did they? <clears throat> I can't really remember who played guitars. With uh, oh, yeah, yeah, it was my friend, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, I'm not sure if they were part of the band, actually. They just kind of helped out. Oh, OK. Yeah. But they, they certainly didn't do any more shows. It was horrible. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, I think about that still. Really? Like a thousand or so shows in <laughs> to my career. I can st still think about that gig. Horrible. It was what's, what's the mental picture that it sticks to your nightmares about Well, we, did, we didn't know the songs. and. Uh, we were opening up for Therion, yeah. the band Therion, which were like in death, they were a death metal band. That's a big time. deal for a first show. Yeah, and there was certain, uh, like a couple of other bands, I can't remember. But I, w I had my back towards the audience the whole show <laughs> because the drummer didn't know the songs. I had to kind of 
now, you know, like oh, next yeah. trip now, you know, that type of shit. And the bass player, he wasn't even on stage. He hid, <laughs> hid in a, a curt the curtain, like standing on the side behind the curtain. And uh, we we did an improvised grindcore song. You can pull that off. Of course you can. It's, it's <laughs> shit, you know. And they stole the microphone. Like the audience uh, stole the microphone stand from David. Uh, so it, there was a fight in the <laughs> middle of the song. And they also uh, threw snooze, you know, snuff. Like Spit? That, you know, like stuff. You oh, know, it's like skull? Yeah. Like, oh. like chewing tobacco. They, they threw it in, in his face, I remember. Oh, God. And I also remember, because the next day, there was a Morbid Angel show mm -hmm. in town. They ended up not playing. They canceled or something. But I was in line for that show, and there was a couple of guys behind me or in front of me like, did you see... Did you see David's fucking band last uh, last night? It's like, no, no, I didn't see that. Oh, good, it was fucking shit. I was like, oh. Little did they know. Yeah. Oof. Well, I'm glad that you're over. So it's it. traumatic. Just talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, during the recording of Morning Rise, uh, the band apparently spent most of their time sleeping and smoking. Uh, smoking, yeah. Okay. But sleeping, we worked quite hard, I think. Okay. So half truth. Half truth, yeah. But lots, lots of cigarettes, yeah. <laughs> but not so much sleeping, I can't remember. Drinking, maybe, yeah. Huh. yeah. Um, Wikipedia says, after a 1996 tour with Cradle of Filth, uh, you dismissed Johan de Farfalla uh, without telling drummer Anders Norden. And he found out while he was on vacation in Brazil, he quit the band and then stayed in Brazil. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah. good guess. Yeah. That's right. But they're doing really well, man. Oh, well, wow. you didn't have, uh, like, uh, I didn't have internet in those days, I think. No. And didn't have a cell phone or anything, so I didn't know how to get hold of him until he called me on my, like, home phone. Um, by which time we had fired Johan. Mm-hmm. And he, I don't know why they was so tight all of a sudden, you know, because he never seemed to get along, get along with him. So I thought he would have been in on our decision there. Hmm. But that, there's a story that's not on Wikipedia about that actually when we fired him, which I think now is quite funny. Okay. Because I just had got a, a new, like a regular telephone thing that had like short, like buttons you could press to get like into con uh, what's it called conference call, like three, oh, sure. th three people could talk at the same yeah. time. Yeah. And we were so nervous. No, actually, that was another bass player we fired. Sorry, <laughs> forget about it. Yeah, we, we fired uh, we fired another bass player like that and called him up, and uh, he answered. I was like, hold on for a second, and then uh, called Peter up, played guitar at the time, and then pressed like three people going, you know, and then I was like, Peter, and he wasn't there, but the bass player was there. I was like, what, why? You know, I'm not Peter, you're talking to me. <laughs> it was really embarrassing. I had to kind of hang up and call him back again, do the whole procedure once again, and then both me and Peter said, you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, Martin Lopez, the great Martin Lopez, he joined the band after answering an ad in the newspaper. That's not true. Not true. No. F first fiction so far. We had uh, ad, we we did have an ad, but not in the newspaper. We put out like a couple of ads in music shops. Okay. Um, that uh, him and Mendes answered both at the same time, but we only wanted one of them because I don't know what we were thinking. We didn't want like uh, two new guys that knew each other, so it kind of okay. might generate like like two camps in the band. But obviously, we ended up hi hiring, so to speak, both of them. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. Uh, this one I thought was strange. Uh, Blackwater Park was named after a German progressive rock band. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Were they that in influential on you that you decided to name the album uh, after them? No, I just liked the name. Oh, okay. Of, yeah, I had I have the record. It's called Dirt Box. Yeah. Do they know? They must know about this by now. I have no idea. No idea. They're, they might have been like a mix English German. Uh, but they put out this one record in 71 or 72. Okay. Which is it's like a Deep Purple, like third rate Deep Purple. Hmm. 
That's still not so bad. No, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, Opeth completed recording Deliverance and Damnation in just seven weeks, and you dedicated both albums to your grandmother who passed away in a car accident during the sessions. Yeah, I can't remember how long it took to record, but uh, it took some, you know, um, it took a long time. And I had no songs written, so that's why it took, so, you know, I was writing songs during the nights and then we recorded during the days. <coughs> and I can't remember if I dedicated both of them to my grandmother, but yeah, she, she, she was uh, run over by a, like a truck uh, oh as we were mixing Deliverance. Oh my God, that's yeah, it was pretty heavy. Yeah. Um, in 2003, Opeth was scheduled to perform in Jordan without a crew due to fear of terrorist attacks, uh, and you guys had to end up canceling because Martin Lopez had an anxiety attack about going into Jordan. Yeah, partly true. Okay. I can't remember if it was like fear. Like uh, I think we were supposed to have crew. There was another show that we ended up doing without crew because of uh, maybe it was like the fucking volcano cloud in Iceland that we had to, whatever, yeah. But that Jordan show got pulled because of Lopez, yeah. Okay, all right. Two more for you. Yeah. Uh, in 2008, you had to cancel four shows because you came down with the chicken pox. True. True. Yeah. How bad was it? Horrible. Oh. Horrible. I'm not sure if you remember having chicken pox. You probably had it as a kid. I, I remember having it. But yeah. when you have it as a kid, apparently it's not that bad. But when you have it as an adult, it can kill you. Yeah, it can, it can uh, cause lung failure and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it was horrible. Uh, my kids obviously had it. And uh, I, I ha my, my mother told me that I had it when I was uh, little. But that I didn't have so many, like, what's it called? Like the... Pox. Pox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a lot in you order to get it out of your system. But it, it, it's never out of your system. It's kind of right. Yeah. Last one. You consider Judas Priest's "Sad Wings of Destiny" as the greatest metal album of all time? Yeah, it could be true. Yeah, it has one kind of weak song on it. I usually say "Sabbath of the Sabbath" is the best heavy metal record of all time, but "Sad Wings" is. Also one of them, but they have the song Genocide on there, which I mm -hmm. was never a big fan of. But otherwise... Otherwise, yeah. Hell top yeah. notch. Yeah. Recorded in where we did the last album? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Cheers. you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs>